Okay. Let's take a look at the first problem that we had uh, to work in class on Tuesday. So the first equation is that x is congruent to 4 mod 7, and the second is x is congruent to 3 mod 9. What's the second one mean is a quality of integers. It says that x is 3 plus 9k, where k is some integer. Now let's take that and let's reduce it mod 7. Well, that says that x is congruent to 3 plus 2k mod 7. But we also know that x is congruent to 4 mod 7. So 3 plus 2k has to be congruent to 4 mod 7. But that means that 2k is congruent to 1 mod 7. And since 4 is the inverse of 2 mod 7, that says that k has to be congruent to 4 mod 7. In terms of integers, that says k is equal to 4 plus 7m, where m is some integer. In other words, x is equal to 3 plus 9k, k is 4 plus 7m, so multiplying it out, x is 39 plus 63m. In terms of congruences, x is congruent to 39 mod 63. Let's double check. 39 is congruent to 4 mod 7, yep, and 39 is congruent to 3 mod 9, so we're all good. Okay, let's take a look at the next problem. Here we've got that x is congruent to 2 mod 5, x is congruent to 4 mod 7, and x is congruent to 3 mod 9. Well, we already know from the last step that the last two congruences can be replaced by x being congruent to 39 mod 63. Well, what's that in terms of equality? x is equal to 39 plus 63k, where k is an integer. Reducing that mod 5, we see that x has to be congruent to 4 plus 3k mod 5, but x is also congruent to 2 mod 5, so 4 plus 3k is congruent to 2 mod 5. 3k is congruent to 3 mod 5. Let's take a, a closer look at that. I subtracted 4 from both sides. That gave me minus 2, but minus 2 is the same as 3 mod 5. And then the uh, inverse of 3... Uh, sorry, uh, so <clears throat> we can cancel the 3's from both sides there, and I sense 3 is co-prime to 5, and get that k has to be congruent to 1 mod 5. Okay, so that would be that k is 1 plus 5m for m an integer, so now x is 39 plus 63 times 1 plus 5m. Multiplying that out, we get x is 102 plus 315m, or x is congruent to 102 mod 315. I'll leave it to you to go off and check that 102 satisfies all three of the congruences that we started with. Okay, now this next problem is a little bit interesting. Notice that the Chinese remainder theorem and everything just talks about congruences that look like x congruent to something, not a multiple of x. So first we need to get these in that form. The uh, inverse of 2 mod 3 is 2, uh, so x has to be congruent to 2 mod 3 in the first one. Uh, the inverse of 3 mod 4 is also 3, so we multiply both sides by 3 and we get x congruent to 2 mod 4. And now if we go and take a look at the last one, the inverse of 4 mod 5 is actually 4. And so we multiply that and we get x congruent to 2 mod 5. Well then, if we've got that, x is congruent to 2 mod 3, 2 mod 4, and 2 mod 5. Really, that says that we have to just be x, have x congruent to 2 mod the least common multiple of 3, 4, and 5, or x congruent to 2 mod 60. And so you could check 62. Um, x being 62 is some, another thing that works out in here. Okay, last problem. We start off with 71x congruent to 26 mod 238. Now, let's take a look at what 238 factors as. So 238 is 14 times 17. It's also 2 times 119. So at where 14 and 17 are co-prime and 2 and 119 are co-prime. So we could kind of choose either one here. Now let's think about what is going to have to happen here. Um, that uh, congruence, 71 congruent, uh, 71x congruent to 26, if we use 2 and 119 as the modulus, 
2 helps um, reduce things dramatically, but 119 doesn't. We can't simplify the 71 or the 26. However, if we use 14 and 17 as the moduli, everything gets a bit simpler. So let's take a look at that. So we know that our original congruence is the same as solving these two simultaneous congruences. And those are equivalent to reducing um, mod 14. Well, 71 is 1 mod 14 and 26 is 12 mod 14. So that first congruence becomes x congruent to 12 mod 14. The second one, 71, is, uh, is also uh, congruent to or it's congruent to 3 mod 17 and uh, 26 is obviously congruent to 9 mod 17. Um, again, to use the Chinese remainder theorem, we need to get rid of that pesky 3. Well, 3 is co-prime to 17, so the cancellation laws for congruences apply, and we can cancel there and get that x is congruent to 3 mod 17. Now we just go through our usual process, x is 3 plus 17k, for k being an integer, reduce that mod 14, and we get that uh, 3 plus 3k. x is congruent to 3 plus 3k mod 14, but x is also congruent to 12 mod 14, so we have 3k is congruent to 9 mod 14. Again, cancel the 3, this is a co-prime to 14, so k congruent to 3 mod 14, k equals then 3 plus 14m for m an integer. So now let's substitute that back in. x was 3 plus 17k, but k was 3 plus 14m. So multiplying that out, we get x is 54 plus 238m, or x is congruent to 54 mod 238. That's, to me, a lot more efficient procedure than going in and saying, well... 71 is uh, its prime has co prime to 238, so it has an inverse mod 238. And to find that, you have to use um, the Euclidean algorithm to do Bezu's identity and chase that back. And then you have to multiply whatever that inverse is by 26. And that'll probably give you something bigger than 238. And so you uh, want to reduce that mod 238, and that's all kind of a headache. This is a, a bit nicer way to go about that, and so I uh, hope you found these examples helpful.